Assalamu alaikum. Singa yas. Bihi akhti the bandinan. Hi, how are you? It's really cold outside today, and we're here to bring you a very special Afghan cooks. I'm Miriam, and if this is your first time here, you're in for a big treat because I am standing outside in the snow in the George Washington Thomas Jefferson National Forest in the Shenandoah Valley. And we're gonna do some outdoor cooking. Now, when we got here a couple of days ago, it was 70 degrees, it was sunny, it was beautiful. Um, yesterday it rained all day, and today it's snowing. But we have a beautiful fire, and we have a fantastic recipe that you and I are gonna try out together. The only market in town in the town where we spend a lot of time in the spring and the summer and I guess the end of winter is Walmart. So one of the things that they have at Walmart though are lamb ribs. And it's not a thing that I actually grew up eating. I grew up eating a lot of lamb um, and a lot of fatty lamb too, which I adore. But my erstwhile producer said, well, we're here. The only thing they have are lamb ribs. Let's see if we can make it work. So I'm gonna take you over this way and I'm gonna show you what lamb ribs from Walmart look like and how you can make them as delicious as short ribs, which are a lot more expensive. And we don't eat pork ribs. So it's not like, you know, we can eat, we eat spare ribs or baby back ribs. So this is a good alternative if you also don't eat pork. I'm gonna show you what they look like. I'm gonna show you some stuff. When you buy lamb ribs, they come in a two pack like this. So you get another one that, I'm just checking to make sure no cars are coming down the road because the camera's in the middle of the road. Um, it comes in a two pack like this. Now you can of course grill them, but that's not what we're gonna do today. And what I did was I, I kind of cut them along the bone while they're still cold. It's much easier to cut. And so I've already cut the other one. I'm gonna cut this one as well move this out of the way so maybe you guys can see and the other one was much easier you could see the bone a lot better um, here I think the bone runs along the entirety of the, the flat and I don't know that my rustic knife can actually cut through it These are outtakes. I'm gonna finish cutting these up, but in the meantime, I've got this really huge, I think they call it a cowboy walk. We're gonna call it an Afghan tawa. Um, and uh, I'm gonna throw some oil. I'm not gonna throw it. I'm going to pour some. So I've cut up the, um, the ribs and I'm gonna tell you what other ingredients I have here. I have onions. This is actually three onions and they're just sliced. I have three tomatoes. I have two serrano peppers that I cut kind of on the diagonal and an entire bunch of cilantro. And then I made a, I made a, a spice mixture before I came out here because it's snowing and cold. Um, and it contains, of course, the usual suspects, right? It's got turmeric, say it with me, cumin, coriander, garlic, onion, dill, salt, pepper, paprika, and cayenne. Oregano, or as I like to call it, oregano. I have this fairly humongous cooker. It's called, I think, a cowboy walk, but it's an Afghan cooker, as far as I'm concerned, because it's big enough to feed exactly one Afghan family, one nuclear family. My Afghan karaye is getting warm, and I'm gonna put some canola oil in here. When I say some, I mean a good bit. 
And then I'm gonna add my onions. One of the things I know that's very different between um, American culture, and I'm not saying all Americans because you're not all a monolith, and Afghan culture is that Afghans love to have picnics. If you watch any of the uh, YouTube stations from Afghanistan or about Afghanistan, you'll see that on holidays, they're always at a picnic they're by. Uh, a river or a creek or in an orchard that has water flowing through it and they're cooking outside or they've brought their their tea and their snacks it's how we pass the time with family and here in america during um, holidays especially eid my family has a very large gathering so everybody we reserve a spot in a at, a, at a park. So everyone brings a, a thermos of tea. And I think that's kind of fun to see how much tea we bring, even if the party is in the middle of the summer. And my hope for next week is to be able to show you how we prepare for Ramadan and bring you during the entirety of it, whether you celebrate or you don't. Um, it's, there's no judgment here. There have been years where my health has not been so great and I have not been able to fast. Uh, I still participate. I wake up for suhoor, make sure that everyone is fed. I prepare iftar, we all pray together. When I'm not doing it, I miss it. And uh, you kind of feel left out because you know a billion people are participating in this. And it's, very, it's a very hard thing to give up. I still like to be a part of the spirit of Ramadan, even if I can't actually fast for the entirety of it. I'm super proud of my kids. They turned 13 last year and they, well, after Ramadan, but they were 12 and they insisted on fasting the entire time. And they did, and it was really fun to fast with them. Um, I know I've seen a lot of videos of non-Muslims who will fast with friends um, or just do it as a challenge for themselves for a day or two or seven. And yes, not even water. Uh, one of the things I forgot to mention was garlic. You know, normally I love chopping garlic. No, nobody does. Nobody loves chopping garlic. But I, at Walmart, I purchased this minced garlic. I know people, people, um, I don't know, people judge you for the kind of garlic you use or whether you use a garlic press or you chop it or, you know what, I don't care. Watch me, judge me. Go ahead, judge me. Judge me after you eat this, then we'll see. Now I'm gonna add my spices. We've got some snow in it, so it's sticking. I'm gonna throw in my tomatoes. I also, inside the house, I've got um, some bread and I have the bread recipe. It's on the blog. It's just Afghan naan, it's the, the regular recipe. Um, and I'm gonna cook that outside also. So I know last time I tried it, when I cooked it outside in the pizza oven, it didn't really work because I couldn't get it hot enough, but I have actually tried it. I've tried it out here on the tawa. We just kind of um, turn it upside down. So it's actually like a tawa. I'm gonna take the ribs and I made a little circle in the middle of the karahi. So when you go to an Indian restaurant or um, an indo pak restaurant and you see like lamb karahi, K-A-R-A-H-I, karahi just means pot. It's just the thing that it's cooked in. It's not like, you know, some fancy word. Lamb ribs are super fatty. These, this is not 
health food. Although I may tag it as such because you get more views. Just kidding. I wouldn't do that. No, I tell, I'm, I put, I'm real with you guys. I don't fake stuff. Everything you see, all of this is really happening. My ribs are almost ready for me to add some braising liquid, but I wanted to talk to you about my hat. It says, I don't know if you can see it, it says, see it? It says decolonized desserts. Um, Justin got me this hat from La Bodega Bakery, which is part of Compass Rose DC. And the executive pastry chef there is named Paula Velez. We ordered some goodies from them and also ordered this hat, which is coming really handy right now. So check her out. It's really important to decolonize. What I'm trying to say is support black women, support women of color. If you take a look, so I'm going to segue really quickly, take a look at the fat that has rendered out of these ribs so far. And we're gonna get even more of that good fat. And one of the things we need to remember is that the reason why a lot of things that are non-fat, for example, um, contain a lot more sugar or other artificial flavors is because fat conducts flavor. And if you don't have fat, you have to find some other way of getting that mm, into your food. I mean, let's be honest. A boneless, skinless chicken breast is edible. You can eat it and it will in fact power your body and give you a lot of protein. So, but it doesn't taste as good even as a boneless, skinless chicken thigh because the thigh meat is fattier. You can eat your chicken breast, but that's fine. You're gonna have to do a lot more to it to make it moist, to make it flavorful. I wish you could smell this right now because it smells really good. We're gonna add some water, the water that I got from the spring. What I wanted to do is I wanted, so there are a bunch of these videos, the outdoor cooking videos that I love. Of course, Grandpa Kitchen is the goat. Rip to Grandpa Kitchen. Grandpa was phenomenal and he was sort of the inspiration, I think for a lot of people to do outdoor cooking. We're gonna add some braising liquid. If you have stock or broth or something, that's fine too. But I think that the spices are pretty strong in what we've done here because we've used about, I want to say a couple of teaspoons and we'll put the measurements in the recipe, you know. We don't expect you to just kind of throw it in there. Eventually, hopefully you will. I'm going to cover this up. I'm probably, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm probably going to put it in this and cover it up and take it inside and put it in the oven for about two hours. And I will check it halfway through and we'll come back. What we're looking for is you're not going to get exactly fall off the bone tender like you do for a short rib or something, but you want something close. And I will let you know exactly what that is when we come back. Salam, welcome back. You notice we're inside because it is snowing very hard outside and it was very cold. So we put the ribs in the oven for two hours at 300 degrees. And you know how I said they were not gonna fall apart like, like short ribs? I was wrong. They're completely falling off the bone. Now, one thing you should be aware of is that a lot of the fat will render out. If you wanted to make some sort of gravy, you could skim off, I would say there's about two inches of fat on there. I would put it in the fridge, let it firm up, then you can take the top part off, which is the fat, and use the rest of it for a gravy. I think it would be pretty delicious. I topped this with some cilantro. I have my serrano peppers here. We made a quick little salad. It has uh, cucumbers, cilantro, salt, dill, parsley, and mint. Of course, yogurt and lemon. And then I made bread. I know I told you all I was gonna make it outside, but honestly, it was so cold that I just made it in a um, cast iron skillet inside. 
So let's give it a taste. Make this. Buy yourself some lamb ribs. Eat it with some achar um, because that sour would be really helpful. That's why the yogurt is really helpful because it cuts through all of the fattiness. And this is a very, very, very fatty cut of meat. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe so that we know that you like what we're doing so that we can keep doing it. Also leave a comment. What would you like to see more of? The pickle recipe is in the link below. The bread recipe is in the link below. You can find all of the recipes on the blog. Until next time, bye.